So in the last video, we went from Nebraska all the way to California and uh, ended up in San Diego. And now we're on our way back to Colorado, which is where we're gonna be staying for the next couple years, hopefully. Yes, I hope, I hope so. <laughs> I'm really excited. This is gonna be a very interesting part of our life. And we haven't been able to really tell anyone about it, but when we move in, we'll, we'll start uh, sharing more information. And it's, I think it's gonna be a huge relief to finally start sharing that information because then it'll start feeling more real. Yeah, it's so. going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be an adventure. So we'll take you along. Yeah. <laughs> See you there. I wish it were that easy. We kind of have a, written up a couple of things here. We're going to kind of talk to each other about this uh, situation. It's not necessarily a script. We wrote down everything we could remember. We found everything we could find as well, but there was a lot of stuff that we did uh, intentionally delete ourselves because we did not want to see their faces or their names. Like, w we were very much affected by this to the point where we wanted to scrub them from memory as much as we could. Anytime I saw his face or their names or anything on my phone, instant delete because I just couldn't stand looking at them anymore. I wanted nothing to do with them. I didn't want to ever talk about them again. But... Because the internet has brought light to a certain situation, we want to share our experience regarding Jameson Stone and Apotheosis Studios. Yep. Hell, we uh, we would never answer a 303 number. Nope, still don't. Like, yeah, we still don't. We still don't like... answer Colorado phone numbers. <laughs> no way. It's scary, dude. Okay, okay, okay. So where did all this start? We started, I would say it all began in Denver Comic Con. Yeah. Or Denver Pop Culture Con. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Some of this, I don't know how this is going to go, but some of this was very traumatic for us, and we did have a hard time coping with those emotions at the time. We were confused about where to go or what to do because it's something that we had never dealt with before. We actually thought we were getting played a pretty good hand. Yeah, and it wasn't until I started having, like... PTSD oh episodes of a past relationship from someone who was very narcissistic uh, in one of my first relationships, and then he had started being affected because of this as well. So, well, she had experienced a similar type of person in the past uh, who she was referring back to, and I, I really hadn't. I honest to be honest, I hadn't. Hey, bud. Great, buddy. He wants to be on the bed. Yeah. At Denver Comic Con, the first time we've gone, we were going to a con in this state. We wanted to travel around uh, outside of just Southern California. We wanted yeah. to make sure that we got to see cons, uh, especially after we had been to Dragon Con. We had traveled across the country to Dragon Con and wanted more of that kind of experience. We went to Denver mainly. Why? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. We went to Denver mainly because we had a friend of ours who was also going, and he was able to help us with the room. And it was going to be cool to see a convention outside of um, S Southern California because we had been to Dragon Con and we loved that it was and uh, was not very populated with like you know whatever. We were very excited, and they had a booth there. We had not known about them really before this. We had a friend. Uh, again, we're not going to be naming any names in this video other than, like, you know, Jameson. Um, people who are directly involved that, and also people who have let us know it's okay to say their name. I have already asked the people who we may mention about using their names or referring to them. Uh, and we have been given the go-ahead for those who we will use. Otherwise, I don't want to get anybody else involved. This is about... One person who manipulates those. Oh, I brown. forgot my lipstick. That's why things look so weird. Hold on. <laughs> we met Apotheosis Studios at Denver Comic Con. Uh, there was a poster of a friend of mine um, strung up on the wall. Like, they had big posters of different artists. Actually, I think two friend friends of mine were on their posters. And I was really excited about that. I was like, oh my gosh, something that my friends were a part of in another, like, outside of Southern California, which is where we were based out of. At the forefront, it's very welcoming. The products looked professional. They had employees who worked on the book that were there handling you know, merchandise and things like that, talking about the book. It seemed like it was a really cool and well put together studio. Like we had, you know, showed some interest and be like, oh, you guys are cool. Maybe we'll get in touch. We started to leave. Yeah, we were down like one of those long con aisles, if you guys have ever been in a, one of the those. The artist alley. Yeah, yeah, like artist alley aisle. Yeah, and 
he had gotten one of his employees to mm -hmm. bring us back to the booth. Who I remember being very cool, by the way. Yeah. Uh, again, no one else, like, the only person who really did us, like, crazy dirty was, was Jameson. We are going to focus on him. So he had one of those guys run up behind us and say, you know, hey, hey, uh, can you guys come back to the booth? And we're like, um, yeah, sure, why not? You know, <laughs> we're at a con. We're enjoying the con. We're meeting booths. We're meeting vendors, all this stuff. And so we go back to the con, and, they, and he says, you look just like my main character. Yeah. For the like, story that I'm writing. And we're what's like. What's her name again? Uh, ah, Zara? Uh, yeah? Zara. Zara? Zara? Yeah, it was Zara, yeah. Um, and we're like, oh, okay, cool. Um, and he's like, all right, well, we, I would really like you to be the, the, the actress or the, the whatever. The for face, the, yeah. For the face of it for a video game that they were developing. Yeah. Whoa! And wow! <laughs> Whoa! That sounds awesome! Yeah, and to preface, he, we had shown, like, you know, my Siri cosplay and stuff like him to, like, we were talking at the booth, so I had shown him my cosplay work. He was very focused on the Siri, and, and in the future, he continued to, uh, which I'll put up on the side here, he continues to reference uh, Witcher constantly in this. He was very much inspired by Witcher at this time. <laughs> So yeah, um, she also had a big scar on her face, like Siri. Oh, 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 that character, your character. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you said his character. He writes himself into all of this stuff. Because he was so interested in me being the face for this game and for, because he wanted to do uh, face capture and motion capture, it was pivotal to have an actress to go along with. And that was my original, like, agreement. That was what I was totally down to do. I had mentioned that I had just gotten out of college doing multimedia design, which includes web design, 3D design, um, vis uh, visual effects, and uh, film. And I was just working on my social media and stuff for a while, so I said, I can help with social media, so I'm useful. Yeah, and he took those things very weirdly, and that was one of the first red flags that we really didn't notice. And again, I'll put a little bit of evidence up here. He was very weird, like, it, it, pretending that we didn't even mention about Bodhi's social media capabilities, and like saying, like, if we can find a job for him, maybe he won't have to pay rent, blah, 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 blah. I was like, pay um, rent? I'm already paying rent. Yeah, and, and so it was very, it, that was one of the first weird things to us, but that happened a little bit later. We left that conversation fairly well. He gave us a book and, uh, you know, he signed it and whatever. And we had, you know, kept in touch and made plans to talk with him once we got back home to Nebraska at the time. We were staying in Nebraska at the time um, and we were about three hours away from where he was. Um, that's actually important for a little bit of a story later on down the line. Get away from the city life for a little bit and eventually come back. We had been in talks with Jameson where he was actually uh, looking at a property and we were very interested because he had promised us a little loft up in the corner there and it was out in the woods in Colorado, which sounded beautiful. And we thought that that was going to be really, really cool. And we were in a tiny, tiny apartment before We then. were. We were in a very small apartment and we wanted to get the hell out. We, yeah. were, we wanted to get out. We were promised that we would be paid um, as well as the space to stay while we worked for them. I didn't know how long that was going to be. I didn't know if it was going to be a couple of months. I didn't know if it was going to be a couple of years. But we were really hopeful for this. The way that they made it sound, and we even visited the property. Beautiful, beautiful property. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's some weird stuff that started to happen behind, behind the scenes. Oh yeah. We were in that apartment. And we were wanting to have something nicer. That sounded a lot nicer. It did. And what he said we had to do in the first place sounded like a really fair deal. Yeah. Before we ever moved oh, yeah. out there, they paid us twice. We were waiting for two months after they said that we were going to be moved out there. They paid us for the small amount of social media work and stuff that we did. Yeah. By saying things like, we want to pay our artists, we want to pay our creators, we want to pay all this stuff. And then it was, and it was like not a very large amount or anything. Before we moved in and everything, they were very uh, about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, very like, oh, we're very into our not employees. It's a team. Like, and I, I, I have it's right there, right there. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't really catch it at the time because we were very new to this. Like this, dude. It was too good to be true. Oh man. And we were very trusting. We took every step that you think you should for a too good to be true situation. It seemed very legitimate. 
but not contract paperwork. Right. We didn't do a contract. That was what saved us, but he was tr- he was wanting it to be what saved him if anything went wrong, but it luckily saved our fucking Yeah, house. we decided, yeah, we'll get there. Whoa! Cult-like behavior is something that you can probably recognize a lot at the times, but sometimes it's very sneaky and it seems like a normal thing. You could think you're going to go work on a video game and then suddenly move halfway across the country and just be like, you guys don't even have cameras? You don't have nothing? They, like, we were very naive at the time, but even when we were living with him and he started boasting about all that stuff, he was anticipating an entire group of people living in this house working for him. Yeah. On, with the cult people still living on, on the, the property, property as well. Right. They, he was giving them so much money to still have them live on the property. He was willingly... Putting a bunch of people into possibly being indoctrinated into a dangerous situation. And we don't know because we didn't get much further than that because we found out <laughs> because we found out that they had a two tried to take out a two million dollar loan, I believe, something along those lines. Which yeah. That property fell through, and they needed to find out something else. More to the cult stuff later. <laughs> yes, we'll come back to the cult stuff. As they went around and they bought the first random house in Colorado that they could find. They were so depressed about not being able to be in this cult house. They they were like talking to us about how like, oh, this just might not work. Yep. This just, you know, this is just, uh, we'll just have to forget about this and you guys can work remotely, which we should have totally done instead. Yeah. At the time... I don't know. That didn't work out for some other people who worked remotely. Uh, that's They true. didn't see all the signs like we did. You were like, guys, like, why don't you find a, like, a warehouse or a property? Or just like, something a little cheaper. Y- yeah. Something like, you can use. Like, something that is, like, actually proper for a business to start. They found a house, which I don't know how legal that is. They bought this random house in Colorado to keep their plans going. They straight up told us that we saved apotheosis for uh, giving them the idea of finding a, a, a different place. <laughs> An interesting situation that was going on at the time was that we were living in Nebraska and we were fostering a cat. We were fostering a mama cat and she had a bunch of kittens and they're super, super cute. Well, one of them I kind of got attached to. And Toto. Oh, she's upstairs. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Toto is still with us today, as well as Jam and Boy, our cats who were with us at the time. And he had told us that it was okay that we had our cats there. Well, I actually have evidence of it being very complicated. It is very complicated. In fact, I kind of feel bad for some of the people in his past who had animals. Yes. Um, essentially, he is not a cat person. Very, very much not a cat person. Yeah, because they're killers. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're killers. And their kibble smells like death. They smell, their, their food <laughs> smells like dead animal. And, okay. We're laughing, so, but like, this was legitimately was, something we dealt with. It's like, ner- like, dude, nervous laughter. Like, it made us so uncomfortable. Okay. He made it very clear that cats were not something he was fond of. At first, very much like, animals are not allowed. You are not going to be able to bring your cats. Find another place. To put your cats. We're not doing that. And I told him that these are our service cats, which again I have up here. And I think, you know, he he knew he couldn't really say anything against that completely. And so he kind of wavered a little bit, but prefaced that, hey, you guys are getting extra treatment because my other employees have given them away or had them taken by friends to move into this property or to work for him. Yeah, like people would kill to have this opportunity type situation. I was like, well, that kind of sucks for those people a lot because I would hate to be separated from my fur babies. Which I believe we had as registered service animals at the time. Yes, So yeah. because, well, for a long time it was difficult for me to travel in the car and Jam's a travel kitty. And I, you know, I would carry Jam or I would bring Jam with me in my truck because uh, driving gives me some major anxiety. We got to the point where he was fine with us having the cats, and he insisted that we go into this tiny, like, separate house to the side of the cult property that didn't have running water, didn't have a bathroom or anything like that. We and would have to walk down to, in the snow. in the snow to go to the <laughs> bathroom, and he said, well, yeah, I mean, eventually we'll get running water up to it. That was originally the plan, and that's why he originally let us have the cats after they you know, messed up the cult house and had to find a different house. He couldn't say no to the yes he already said, so sure, you can have your cats, but 
they're not allowed to leave your like tiny bedroom. Who has cats in a house and sticks them in a room all day long, every day? Who does that? And, if and you accepted them in. We were already at the place in Nebraska and we actually had to stay with our friend for a few months before moving there because of the whole delays with the cult house. Yep. And we started talking about moving up there. It was already kind of mandatory that we had a place so we couldn't really say no. But we did agree at the time that our cats could have space to run around and that they wouldn't be stuck 24-7 in a tiny room. Mm -hmm. He even said, like, oh, I feel bad sometimes being in the biggest room f because it's both of you guys and the oh, cat. He, he straight up just acknowledged he was treating our cats and us poorly and was like, I feel bad, but then I think about how my daughter and I need that space more. Yeah. All right. So we don't want to talk too much about his family life or situation, but I yeah. do want to say one thing is that I do hope to f that she is the exemption to his behavior. I completely agree. All I want to say is I hope she's doing well and I loved her to bits. Yeah. Look at how spacious for two people and three cats and how at times we were kind of stuck in there because he would have fits and we didn't- We would just we lock ourselves away. Yeah, we couldn't be near him. Yeah. Side note. There were times where we genuinely felt like our car or the room was bugged. He would say things, but he was, our room was literally one wall from his. It was, it was sad because when we had issues and we wanted to talk about things, we felt like we had zero privacy and we weren't yeah. sure if somebody had their ear up to the wall because sometimes things would come up in conversation later that were like, how do you know about did, that? Did, did, did. Did you, did he talk, what? Yeah. Uh, did you talk to him about that? So it was a little weird, for sure. Uh, I guess he found some cat hair. Uh, yeah, on the couch on or like something. On a couch or something. And it's like, uh, we go behind his back and things like that because, and whenever he's away. After he had found that cat hair, he would say things like, not just to us, he just attacked everyone saying, you guys are going behind my back. I'm gone for an hour and I find cat hair. I, the, the, the chores aren't done, which he had a lovely, uh, little calendar that yeah. he wouldn't, do you see that little question mark right there? He wouldn't participate, which is why we have these slew of pictures scrolling by right now, oh, uh, proving right. that he didn't do his tasks, but would get extremely upset if we like missed one cup or one thing. This here is a cup of water. What's significant about this cup of water? It didn't belong to either of us, but only half an hour before we were yelled at for leaving a cup of water on the counter. Yep. <laughs> now this is a great opportunity to say something good about what happened as well. We were promised not just, you know, room and board and to be paid for the work that we were doing, but that they would give us food. He paid for a lot of our food. Anytime we would go out, we paid for food, for, for our own food. We were always paying for food, but the idea that we weren't paying for food was in his mind because he would go to Costco and buy for everybody in the company. He, in the beginning, he was like weirdly like, I want to know your your thoughts on everything. I want you to call the shots, yeah. Ash. I want you to, like, was, I want to hang out with you. And when I went to Whole Foods with him, the way he treated people seeing us like a couple was really <sighs> weird. There are some things that he would talk to me about man to man at the gym and things like that, that my man, you are far beyond the type of person to be judging anyone. I'd like to just put some quotes right here. See if you remember any of those, something along those lines, maybe not word for word, but you, you fucking love locker talk. Don't you do locker talk? Do you grab her by the work situation here? Um, Originally, he was letting us choose in the house where we wanted to work. He showed up, I brought my own desk. I liked my desk. I, I even actually ended up leaving my desk there because it was too heavy when we left. I liked my desk. It was my streaming desk, it was a nice desk, but <laughs> she had her set up upstairs um, originally and was gonna work upstairs and yeah. was doing fine until somebody got a bug up their ass and decided that there's no way anybody could work 
independently on their own upstairs. You're probably not he, working. Yeah, he had me move all of my stuff downstairs. He was like, you just need to be a part of the team. I had specifically asked if I could have my own space to work because I am a very secluded person in, in, in most cases. Like, I am extremely introverted. Yeah. And I do my best work when I'm alone, blaring music and like, you know, in hyper focus mode, like nothing distracting. Yeah. You guys ever watch TikTokers do TikToks in front of people? No. Because they moved all of her stuff down to the basement, we ended up trying to set up down there to record social yeah, to media TikToks things, TikToks, like all those sorts of things. And there were like times where they would like walk downstairs and instead of just keep on walking, they'd stop and just stare as we tried to make content. He like totally gaslit me when we were saying that like I was a little uncomfortable with him just like staring at me making TikToks. He was like, well, what are you, you know, you're going to send it out to the world. Like, <laughs> like I, I, I was still new to like doing TikTok videos consistently, videos in general. And to have someone staring at me while I was doing that, and it's like, well, oh. So this kind of leads us all into... What were we doing there? We were told we were supposed to be making a video game. Until he seemed to not have the people to do the jobs that he needed and decided to use the people that he sucked in to fill those roles, um, Ash was the actress for it. She was the one who was going to be doing this, this, this. We thought that they were going to be ready for the roles they hired us on for. The most he originally agreed upon with me was me, like outside of modeling for her, was make her sketches in her in her sketchbook concept art those sorts of things yeah well not even concept art literally just it, when you play the game in her diary when you open up her diary right. it would have essentially my sketchbook in it yeah which was was a really sick idea and i was down with that that was sick which we could have done remotely there was no reason for us to physically be there there was literally no plan we they we were oh told my gosh. we were told how to work, when to work, how much to work. And then they were given all these different programs to like write down how our times, like clock in, yeah, clock out. Apps. Yeah, while we lived in the same house that we worked in. Now the problem with this is that we were there 24 seven. We are content creators. They were trying to pay us hourly. We don't work hourly, we work until the job is done. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. And, and we get paid for the content that we create. And before ForeverCon, there was there was nothing to make, like there was not enough work to be done or like a solid plan for me or Bodhi to validate hourly pay and stuff like that. There was really no team, there, no, no equipment, plan. nothing like that. They just thought they would pill for it, money. Just control. Like, just, just the control. apps telling us how to talk telling us when we were allowed to leave. When we wanted to approach somebody with a problem, they made us say things like, I feel, from my perspective, things like that. If and, we said but to and him. If no buts, always ands. Or if you say but, you better mean but. Dude, he, dude, he, you said but even accidentally, and he'd be like, and? You know what? We have grown so much in our communication and in our relationships since those days when you were telling us how to speak to each other. Telling him how to treat me while simultaneously like saying really shitty things about me. Calling her things like princess. We had man-to-man -man conversations about my relationship, which is unnecessary. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking this 30 year old man who's been through divorces and happens to be kind of like tagging along a 20 year old girl is not gonna be giving me advice about my relationship. So, red flag, red flag, red flag, and it pushed me farther and farther away, my brother. We moved in, what, in like November or October? And we were out of there by mid-December. During the whole process of making anything, right, we'd be sitting at our desks, and I liked to sit with my, I didn't like my, he wanted our computers to be able to where he could walk behind us and still see what we are doing. I don't like that. So I turned my desk around. That was enough for him to say that I was probably just searching, Googling online, doing all those sorts of things. Yeah. Oh, of course I was, brother. You weren't paying us. The amount of work that I actually put out, that we actually put out, that throughout the whole process, he did nothing but micromanage from his fancy dancy, dirty little office, manipulate everyone who was there in some weird way against each other, one way or another. It was very strange. We were working there 24 seven all the time. We had these timesheets and everything. And when we submitted the timesheets oh, to him- Oh, here's some timesheets right here. Oh, right. To prove that I actually did put time in. Wait, but it doesn't actually prove anything because we were gun decking, apparently. Oh, we yeah. Were, we were apparently, oh, apparently padding hours, is what he would say. Um, well, you can't really pad hours on a job that's not 
hourly based. It should not have ever been hourly based. It's not even a based. job. It wasn't even a thing yet. We he, were still living in the house his preparing. His secretary was begging him to write a paragraph for his book. Like, for us to know what to do next. It, the, there were things that I was told to work on that needed certain things that he was on. And when he would send me the documents that I was reading about, like his new book or whatever, the, the, the file said it had not been modified in a couple of years. So I'm very confused. We are still very confused on really what we were even supposed to be doing there. Luckily, the Forever Con thing started and, and he needed assets for that. And he needed people, he needed us to grab some influencers for the event, which... We happily did, because we he knew treated some, poorly. We knew some influencers. Now, this answers a new conversation. What did he ask you to do for ForeverCon? He wanted me to get in contact with the influencers, make banners for them. Bodhi came up with the idea for trophies because he was having trouble with trophies for the cosplay contest, and Bodhi came up with the idea of... Paying an independent creator vendor to use their product as the trophy. Yeah, and it was a cute little plushie right here, which I still have. I love them. You guys were amazing, and that was an incredible idea for a convention to have plushies as trophies, and you guys did yeah. an incredible job with that, and, and I, I'm really happy that I was able to draw some assets for you guys to hopefully use in the future as well. Now, some of you true believers who entered the realm of ForeverCon back in the day would have known that it was freezing cold and there was snow everywhere and nobody showed up. And if they did, they trudged, trudged, trudged through the snow to get there. The volunteers helped immensely, just as much as we were running around like chickens with their heads cut off. Everyone else who came wanted it to be fun and exciting yeah. and enjoyable, but all he could talk about was how lucrative it is. There were still vendors saying they would come next year because of the staff. You deserve the credit because of the green room and those sorts of things. They were not going to be a green room. He did not care about the staff. He didn't care about getting people coffee or food. And this is not something that we can prove, but you have to take my word for it. We had conversation after conversation I... about her being like, they need a place to sit down. I said there was snow out there, right? Mm -hmm. That tells you it's probably around winter time. Well, it was about Thanksgiving. Weird about well, so that. we had some friends at the time who flew out. They did, uh, they did their jobs. They were there. It was on the company dime because it's what we were asked to do. Well, they stayed with us as well because, of course, he wasn't going to buy them hotels, right? So they stayed all packed in the basement and, like, a bunch of people laying on the floors and stuff. That night, we had cooked a Thanksgiving dinner. Everybody had cooked a Thanksgiving dinner. Which... I was like a little bus boy and yeah. they didn't let me hang out with my friends. And I wanted her to hang out with her friends. I was okay with doing the work to clean up, to follow around, like do whatever the fuck, because I knew that they were pressuring us to keep cleaning and make sure that there was no mess. And it was like very, 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 very controlling. In my ear, them to me, why is she just sitting around? Why is she just sitting around? You need to, you need to, you need to go, you need to go tell her to get up and do some of this stuff because she's just sitting around and not doing it. And I was like, dude, she's trying to really enjoy really her fun. friends who are here. We missed out on major opportunities during that time. So many conventions. We could have worked and... with some really cool studios that had offered us at the time and we couldn't be there because we had to be there for apotheosis. Them or nothing. Yeah, when in the past they had said, oh, we encourage you to go fly out on your own. And, you I, and right here, we encourage you. We just have been very reclusive because of how much we were taken advantage of. It scared us. I, I jumped out of the cosplay community real quick and it broke my heart because I, in that time at ForeverCon, I had actually found a newfound love for cosplay right yeah. before that. And we and thought that that was something that we really could help yeah. to keep away from the toxic nature of some of the communities that you might find. Very it's a budding community. They're very impressionable. Impressionable. They're very impressionable. So, Jameson Stone, for a guy who's constantly demonstrating how strong you are, I would have to say that you make yourself a victim more than anybody I've ever met. I would say um, your work ethic sucks and that you're able to manipulate others into the work that you don't want to do or the effort that you don't want to put in. Wherever your money comes from, we were never interested in it and we didn't want to take advantage of you. We were looking for a way forward in our future and in our careers and ultimately it ended with us not trusting those peers that we worked with at the time even. We stopped working on projects. We stopped trusting people and we decided that we would not do anything unless it was for ourselves on our own. And that's the only thing I can thank the experience for. Great experience. Um, is we are now getting married, own a home, have 
chickens and two beautiful puppies, along with our fur babies who now have plenty of space to run. And All the fun. space, vertical space, the horizontal space, the hidden <laughs> and space. We're doing what we love. I'm bringing cosplay back. I'm drawing and, and, and posting art stuff that I've never really shared with you guys before. And I'm finally able to start creating YouTube videos with the space that I have desired for so long. I have backlogged videos for years. So we can thank the experience for that. Yeah. But I will never forgive you and I will never thank you for what you did to us and to so many others who you've hurt, manipulated, abused, and groomed. And I just hope that you don't have an opportunity to progress any further. Seeing your face pop up anywhere at any point in time on social media has been actually traumatizing to us. We think all of a sudden back to that rough and stressful stage that was all about you. Now you it's about it us. All about you. Now it's now it's all about. Now it's you. really all now about you. Now it's all you, about it? you, homie. And I'm really happy that people are able Fuck. to see this. Finally. Happy to be able to say something about it. Yeah. I wasn't even able to say this much about it that I've talked about in this video to her between us because of the type of care that I had for you as a person that you built into me whenever we first met. Acting like an older brother, acting like somebody who actually gave a damn, acting like somebody who was going to give us an opportunity for the hard work and the things that we had gone through, and you took advantage of us. You you lied to us like crazy. and Right and, to our faces. And gave me a lot of hope and happiness and padded like, oh, oh, you're going to be a star, you're going to be, you're going to be this, you're going to be that. You led an impressionable young kid fresh out of college into a situation you knew was not prepared and was inappropriately placed. You still talk about how it was all our faults and how we, even though you, you groveled to us after Forever Con saying like us and the volunteers saved it single-handedly and then later saying we did nothing over the phone. To tell us that we did nothing while we were there. To tell us that we did no work when all we wanted to do was every single day use that time to find out what the f kind of work it was we were we supposed to even concept. be doing. We loved the idea. And Carlos's work was phenomenal. And he, he carried your f work on his back single-handedly. This is Carlos. He's a 3D designer. And phenomenal. He, he's amazing. I would say that if you guys ever wanted somebody from Colombia who does an amazing, amazing, amazing job with their 3D work that doesn't just steal assets from sites to try and fit into places instead of paying their fucking artists. Or say that a female 3D artist uh, is just probably borrowing assets. We just shouldn't hire her. There are so many things that you said that I wish that I had had a recorder on because it was like, all right, I can't tell if this is bordering on racist, ageist, sexist. I don't even oh. know what the hell we were talking about. When half he the time. talked about Carlos, he was treating Carlos like a charity. Like case. a third world kiddo. And that, my, the guy is a He's phenomenal so human being. So smart. Whatever. Yeah, it, it, the point is, we don't want anybody to go out and attack him. But this is us. This is our story. This is our story. This is what we went through. And we just want you guys to keep an eye out and be, be safe. Make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. Make sure that the stories you're being told are true. Do your research. I mean, we did too, but... Man, we, we got lucky with the fact that we didn't have a contract because we would have been stuck there had we had a contract. But in most cases, look for contract. Make your own invoices. Make them accountable. Don't hold them responsible for the accountability. It is so dangerous out here for freelance artists and especially now more than ever, when animation and 3D and all of that has been being kicked around in the dirt by, by bigger companies. And, and more now than ever, this should be a sign that we shouldn't be giving platforms to people like him. We can give it the platform to the writers who worked on the projects that he was forefronting and, and forcing them through. Give credit to the creators that he was working with. Give credit to the writers that were carrying his content. Give credit to the people who were trying to save the crumbling world around him so that no one else got hurt. Let's give credit to these people because and, they deserve it. Yeah, and let's hold those accountable who don't. Because let's, they deserve it. <laughs> they, because they deserve it. Overall, there are so many things that I would love to say. Um, but really, it's not worth any second of our time to think about you any further. If you make a video or an apology or something, 
I won't watch it. Yeah. (laughs) Not my problem. We've already given you enough of our time, and the rest of the creators coming out have proved to us that this was a repeating offense, and you don't deserve our time. That's our story. Yep. Yep. Of how we almost got into a cult. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, It means a lot that people are willing to hear our side of the story. Um, We give our hearts out to anyone who has also been a victim of the situation. And if you, you know, want to share your story, uh, you know, or anything, just let us know. We're all here to support each other right now because this is some cray cray. But um, can't thank you guys enough. Uh, thank you for listening and, and have, have a good one. Have a safe one. Let's hope that this, that he doesn't have the ability to hurt anyone else. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. See you. See you. <laughs> and if anybody's interested in more information on the topic, you can head over to studlystone.com. Also, we had filmed this before having the interview. So please check that out to get more horrific detail. And if you have any questions, be sure to let us know.